too late now. It is. It's like, I should have been in 11th grade right now. I should have been a senior next year. You know, and I'm not. I'm still in the 10th grade. You know? It's too late. Everybody drop me now. Not everybody, not all Latinos, but far too many. About 30% of Latino youth drop out without graduating or never even enroll in school. About 150,000 Latino youth quit school last year. And if nothing changes, that number will only increase because Latinos under the age of 18 represent the fastest growing segment of our population. Most American cities have large Latino populations, both immigrant and native born. Dominicans and Puerto Ricans in New York, Cubans in Miami, Mexicans and Central Americans in Los Angeles and much of the Southwest. While dropout rates vary among these groups, the overall rate of 30% is higher than that of any other racial or ethnic group. By contrast, 9% of whites and 12% of blacks fail to finish high school. What explains this persistent and seemingly intractable failure rate among Latino youth? Who's to blame? Is there a simple explanation? Society is always asking the schools to solve its problems, including this one. Most educators seem willing to search for solutions, but whether schools alone can solve the problem is doubtful. The Merrill Report. Lost in Translation. Latinos, Schools, and Society is brought to you by the people of Toyota. Foundation, the Annie E. Casey Foundation, the Pew Charitable Trusts, with additional funding by the Annenberg CPB Projects and the John S. and James L. Knight Foundation. Why does 30% of Latino youth drop out of high school? There are dozens of possible explanations, including poverty, insufficient educational opportunities, and the lure of the streets. But let's start with language. Difficulty speaking English is the reason talked about most often. For immigrants or the children of immigrants, learning to speak and write English is generally considered the key to success. I think people draw a correlation between knowledge of English and intelligence as well. So if a kid doesn't speak English very well, he must not be very intelligent. 3.2 million American students are enrolled in special school programs designed to teach them English. About half of them, 1.4 million, are in California, where we locate our story. California, like most other states, is trying to figure out the best way to teach these young people English. There are three competing approaches, English immersion, dual language, and the most controversial, bilingual education. In bilingual education, teaching in the early grades is in the native language, but in English in the later grades. And they need to at least have knowledge in their own language of how to read and how to write, because many of the skills in Spanish are transitional to English. In the method known as English immersion, all teaching is in English from the beginning. It is really a very simple process in teaching English. If you can speak English, you can teach English. In dual language classrooms, all children learn to speak and write in two languages. We are all learning a second language. Yes. Some of us are learning English as a second language, and some mm -hmm. of us are learning Spanish as a second language. In 1976, California passed a law requiring bilingual education. In this approach, students are first taught in their primary language and moved gradually over three or four years into English. The goal is English fluency. In this kindergarten class at Woodlawn Elementary School in Bell, California, at least 90% of the day is in Spanish. Gallo in English, they see most rooster, verdad? Bilingual classes work, children do learn, and they do become fluent in English. And that's the goal of the bilingual program, is for children to become fluent in English. Mary Jennison co-teaches with Carmen Ibanez. As with most kindergartners, these five and six-year-olds learn the basics, the alphabet, how to count and how to write their names. Lourdes, oh, mira, una 
este. ¿Es la mayúscula o la minúscula? La minúscula. She's doing S words and finding the S in the children's names because one way children learn how to read, especially when they're beginning, is finding letters in their names. ¿Cuántas hay S en la palabra Julián? ¿Cuántas es cero? Vamos a poner cero. Kimberly, tu nombre es cero. Vamos a poner cero. Oh, mira, Lourdes, ¿cuántas? About 10% of the day is spent doing English as a second language, which is commonly abbreviated ESL. Whatever literature I'm doing in Spanish, I try to find something in English that relates so that I can teach an ESL lesson in my classroom as well that will go with the literature. At Woodlawn, playtime is also learning time. These kindergartners have a supervised period in which they jump rope and play games in English. Now help me say the rhyme. Here we go. Hippity, help me hippity, hop. How many? Four. I stop. Good. Okay, Andrea. One. Try again, Andrea. One more time, Andrea. Count. Everybody help me count. One. And many children of these children come from homes where no one speaks English. All they know is what jump is in Spanish or what run is in Spanish. Wow, David, go! Jump! Oh, good job! And they're going to become fluent English speakers. But they need to be, they need to start out where they are now because they don't have someone at home to help them speak English. And they need to at least have knowledge in their own language of how to read and how to write because many of the skills in Spanish are transitional to English. By second grade, about half of the instruction is in English. For example, Maria Dolores Solaris teaches math in both languages. How would we say the second? Two dollars and ninety-six cents. What is the first thing we do when we have a problem? Nos fijamos en el signo, and that is we look at our sign. You were teaching math, you were doing some, uh, some uh, dollars problem, yes. and you were kind of moving back and forth. I need to do that because I have some students that their basic language is Spanish, and they have not, don't have enough skills in English to be able to understand it all. Later in the day, Solaris conducts a lesson on the solar system in two parts. First, in Spanish. Once she feels her students have mastered the basic concepts, she teaches it again, this time in English. I am Mars. I am known as the red planet because of my color. Well, what we want to do is have the students that their primary language is Spanish learn the basic concepts in their native language. So as they're learning their English, you know, then the two will meet eventually. The transition to English continues as children move up. In this class of third and fourth graders, virtually all of the instruction is in English, although teacher Janice Tamahiro does speak Spanish. I'm looking around the room, on the walls, almost everything. The print is in English, and it's, and it's the children's print. Um, and they can read it to you, they're, they're the authors. And so you will see that they are functioning in English, but if you ask them in Spanish, they could tell you what they did in Spanish. When you read books, do you read books in English or in Spanish? Oh. Wow, I get English, I get Spanish, and I get both. Well, now who reads in both? Oh, <laughs> everybody reads in both. Well, how do you choose which one? Can we go back here? We try to um, figure it out which one is the one that is more interesting. I want reading to be a pleasant experience, and I want them to read what they want to read. So and so they will choose. Sometimes you'll see them pick English books, and sometimes they choose to read the Spanish books. They choose, though. Yes. And these are books that they take home and read. Now, if you have a question to ask Mrs. Tamahiro, do you ask her in English or in Spanish? Why? Because she wants to hear more English if we get mixed up. Well, if you went up to her and asked her a question in Spanish, would she answer you in Spanish? Yes. Yes. No. Yes. 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 She would answer you in English. Would she make you speak in English? No. Are you, you're allowed to speak Spanish? Yes. I'm trying 